Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about neuromuscular blocking agents. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. So, what do we mean by neuromuscular blocking agents? Medications that paralyze skeletal muscles by blocking the transmission of nerve impulses at the neuromuscular junction are known as neuromuscular blocking agents. Now, what are the type of neuromuscular blocking agents? There are two types of neuromuscular blocking agents. One is depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents and another one is non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents. Let's look into it one by one. First one is depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents. They cause depolarization and contraction by activating cholinergic receptors, then block subsequent neurotransmission causing paralysis. So here, two things we need to remember which is happening are contraction and paralysis. An example is succinylcholine, otherwise called saxamethonium. It also has a medical short abbreviation called SUX. Now, how is succinylcholine given? The root is intravenous and the onset of action is 30 to 60 seconds and lasts for a duration of 4 to 6 minutes. The indications are it is an adjunct to general anesthesia to facilitate endotracheal intubation or choice for rapid frequent intubation, to induce skeletal muscle relaxation during surgery or mechanical ventilation. Succinylcholine is contraindicated in case of malignant hyperthermia, skeletal muscle myopathies, known hypersensitivity to the drug, in patients with major burns, hyperkalemia, etc. The adverse effects include muscle pain, respiratory depression, apnea, hyperkalemia, increased intraocular pressure, and malignant hyperthermia. Nursing considerations include check the vital signs, assess the respiratory pattern, closely monitor respiratory rate and signs of respiratory failure such as rapid labored breathing, cyanosis, confusion, irritability, sleepiness, headache, oxygen, desaturation. If any of these signs are found, notify the physicians immediately. Monitor the SpO2. Monitor n-tidal carbon dioxide and do cardiac monitoring also. And monitor serum potassium. Next comes non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents. It is a form of neuromuscular blocker that does not depolarize the motor end plate but rather exerts its paralytic activity by blocking the activity of acetylcholine at the cholinergic receptors. Following are the most commonly used non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents. First comes atracurium. The onset of action is 3 to 5 minutes and the duration of action is 20 to 35 minutes. It is an intermediate acting neuromuscular blocking agent and it is used for mechanical ventilation and because it has long duration of action, it is used for surgical procedures. Next drug is cisatracurium. The onset of action is 2 to 5 minutes and the duration of action is 20 to 60 minutes. It is an intermediate acting neuromuscular blocking agent and it is used for surgical procedures and to facilitate intubation. Next drug is Vicuronium. The onset of action is 3 to 5 minutes and the duration of action is 20 to 45 minutes. It is also an intermediate acting neuromuscular blocking agent and it is used for short surgical procedures, intubation and mechanical ventilation. Next drug is Rocuronium. The onset of action is 1 to 2 minutes and duration of action is 20 to 35 minutes. It has a rapid onset of action and it is preferred for rapid intubation, short outpatient surgical procedures. Next drug is pancuronium. The onset of action is 2 to 5 minutes and the duration of action is 60 to 100 minutes. It is a long-acting neuromuscular blocking agent and is used for surgical procedures and mechanical ventilation. 
Here comes precautions to be taken when these drugs are given in case of paralyzed patients. Ensure adequate sedation and analgesia prior to paralyzing the patient. Check the pain level of the patient. Check the level of consciousness. Elevate the head of the bed. The head of the bed should be elevated to reduce the risk of aspiration, particularly during enteral feeding. Pupillary reflexes should be closely monitored to assess neurologic status. DVT prophylaxis, where low-dose subcutaneous heparin or mechanical compression device is required. Endotracheal suctioning is done in order to remove secretions because neuromuscular blocking agents inhibit cuff reflex. Careful alignment of head and neck, regular passive limb movements, and regular change of position is done. Artificial tears should be installed every 2-4 to four hours and the eyelids should be taped shut to prevent corneal drying and ulceration. So here you go with neuromuscular blocking agents. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.